Okay, I want to mention one other thing about social context, which is this, which is this contagion issue. So it turns out that in the, uh, in the worst, most violent neighborhoods in Chicago, there is really awful gang violence where often, uh, you know, three, four people a day are getting killed. And what happens is somebody gets killed and then the next person is defending that person's honor and so on and the cousin and this and that. And people are killing each other in these neighborhoods all the time. It's so violent. So there's a, a, a friend and colleague of mine named Dr. Gary Slutkin who's an epidemiologist, and he looked at this situation, he lives in Chicago, he looked at the situation, and he thought, you know, look, I study epidemics, and epidemics are where you have these viral patterns going around, and he said, why can't we look at violence that way? What if violence is like an epidemic that spreads? You remember in, in Syndrome E, one of the issues was group contagion, right? So he said, look, there are all these social programs to try to combat poverty and housing issues and education issues, all in the hope of stemming violence. But what if we just try to stem the violence itself? What if we address that directly? So he started an organization called Ceasefire, whose motto is Stop Killing People. And the idea with Ceasefire is to understand how violence spreads in a community and how to stop it. How you can interrupt the violence so that just like any disease epidemic that you want to get down below a tipping point, how you get this down below a tipping point. And one of the things, so, so um, so Gary set this up. It's been a tremendously successful community intervention program for violence intervention. And one of the things I'm doing now is I'm working with Gary to study, to do neuroimaging on the high-risk youth in these neighborhoods and try to figure out what's going on. And the reason it's so important is because of these social context issues. So it turns out that everybody knows that in these neighborhoods, a young man will commit an act of violence in front of his peers. But he won't do it in front of his grandmother. If his grandmother's watching, he won't do it. Now, that's very interesting, right? Because it's the same hardware, but he's running a different software program depending on who's watching him in that instant. So it's a, very, it's a very fast switch in terms of social context. And the reason we need to understand this is so that we know how to build and optimize community intervention programs. And so really the heart of what Gary is doing here is setting it up so that there are community expectations. So that if you, you might be mad that somebody's insulted you, but if you respond with violence, you will be ostracized by community elders. And it's a very clever move. It's a way of studying what's going on and using that to try to steer things right. Which leads me to the final point, which is what can we do as we understand these things? How can we make things better when we understand it? So the first thing that I want to point out that I think is so critical is the issue of education. 